Honesty is the first chapter of the book Wisdom. Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, he probably said that after he defied Congress and made a treaty with France without their permission. Our pursuit of history begins in early 1803. In Europe, Beethoven was writing his third symphony and Great Britain and France were embroiled in a power struggle for European supremacy. Over in the United States, President Thomas Jefferson was halfway through his first term in office on the verge of making the deal of a lifetime with Napoleon I. Meanwhile, in the Caribbean, France was busy fighting for control of present-day Haiti in a conflict known as the Haitian Revolution. What they thought would be over in short order had raged on since 1791. Inspired by the French Revolution, a man named Toussaint Léouverture, a former slave, led enslaved persons on the island in a rebellion against planters. He eventually went on to capture the Spanish colony of Santo Domingo, present-day Dominican Republic, and declared himself Governor General for Life of Hispaniola. In 1802, Napoleon Bonaparte sent troops to regain control of the region. They weren't successful and were actually driven out of the area in 1804. Additionally, in 1802, France had acquired Louisiana from Spain and had promptly blocked American access to New Orleans. The U.S. desperately wanted possession of the port for shipping purposes and feared that France would use it to control access and trade down the Mississippi River. So in 1803, Thomas Jefferson sent James Monroe, a future president, and Robert Livingston to France to negotiate the purchase of New Orleans, saying, All eyes, all hopes are now fixed on you. For on the event of this mission depends the future destinies of this republic. Oh, okay, so no pressure or anything. When James Monroe joined Robert Livingston in Paris on April 12, 1803, the men were prepared to offer up to $10 million to purchase New Orleans and land in West Florida from France. In need of funds and feeling that the Louisiana Territory was of little use to France without Haiti, Napoleon was willing to do the unimaginable. Sell the Louisiana Territory. All 827,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi River. I'm sure you can imagine the look of utter shock that must have crossed the faces of Monroe and Livingston. After all, they had traveled to France with a hope and a prayer that they could convince Napoleon to sell New Orleans, only to find that the entire Louisiana Territory was on the table. It seemed too good to be true. On April 30th, Monroe and Livingston agreed that the U.S. would pay $15 million for land stretching from the Mississippi River to the Pacific Ocean. Now, all Thomas Jefferson had to do was get Congress to ratify the treaty. Fun fact. The Constitution didn't explicitly give the national government the power to purchase foreign territory. The closest part was Article 4, which discussed how states and territories could be added to the United States. Purchasing land from France, however, wasn't exactly the same thing. This was a problem for President Jefferson because he believed in a strict interpretation of the Constitution. And here he was, trying to stretch it to fit his needs. Probably kept him up a lot at night. He even proposed amending the Constitution to fix the problem. Oh, TJ, you old rule follower. After many discussions, and no additional amendments, Congress approved the purchase in October of 1803, and just like that, the U.S. doubled in size. President Jefferson was beyond eager to start an expedition. In fact, he was so optimistic, he started the process in January of 1803 before James Monroe and Robert Livingston were sent to France. He asked Congress for $2,500 to fund an expedition to the Pacific Ocean, in hopes that the U.S. could establish peaceful relationships and trading partnerships with Native Americans. He also hoped to find a Northwest Passage, a water route straight to the Pacific Ocean. Congress approved his request a week after they approved the purchase of the Louisiana Territory. With these dreams in mind, he commissioned Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to put together an expedition that could accomplish those goals. On May 14, 1804, 45 men, a dog, a 55-foot-long keelboat, and a lot of supplies set sail from St. Louis, Missouri, and began their journey up the Missouri River. 
They called their expedition the Core of Discovery. But that's a tale for another time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you, so don't forget to hit the thumbs up button down below to show some love and subscribe to join our pursuit of history.